morning everyone Tom metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well so we had a pretty active evening last night but not quite as active as what i was anticipating a lot of these storms stayed confined mainly over to the western half of where our severe weather outlook was going to end up being i was expecting a little bit more action further off to the east here but i think we're going to see more of that occur today as I say before in these multi-day events, that a lot of what happens the day before affects what happens the following day. And we, of course, as we mentioned before, here's our enhanced risk. I don't think we used up a lot of energy within the atmosphere, so I think there's a lot of energy still available in regards to severe threat for today and really even for tomorrow as well. We're hoping that we can have things fixed up on the channel here so we can be live for it because we do have that 10% hatch risk once again. This includes Omaha just outside of lincoln nebraska we have kansas city in there as well as des moines iowa so another potentially big day could be in the works here very broad 15 percent wind area wouldn't be surprised if that ends up being upgraded to a 30 percent and then of course our hatch risk with a 40 a 30 percent chance of hail and a pretty broad 15 percent hatch risk area stretching from dallas all the way towards norfolk nebraska here and areas in between and also on day two we'll go ahead and talk about that as well since we're within range we have the hatch risk as well very large 10 percent hatch risk might be a small chance of this being upgraded to a moderate risk we'll have to see how parameters trend throughout the day and through the morning of tomorrow to really see how things pan out with that but the all the hazards are at enhanced risk levels here's a 30 percent wind area and then also of course our huge hatch risk for hail and our huge 30 percent area to go along with it so with that in mind, let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the overview right now. This is our current storm system. It's not quite as coiled up as I was expecting it to be. It's I was expecting it to be a little strong at this point though, but cyclogenesis does occur today. And with that, this is gonna help the wind profile over towards this region. And this will make a much more favorable severe weather event for today. This is gonna really occur probably towards the mid maybe even late afternoon but really starts to pick up after sunset here and that's alarming because peak activity is going to be occurring while the low level jet usually starts to pick up around this time so this would be about at 8 central where we start to see the evidence occurring here just based off of this map alone what's going to end up happening then is after this storm heads out and heads off to the northeast we're going to have a trough ejection, and this is what's going to occur with the next storm. We're going to have this one have a deep dig to it. And by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, this one will start to see some development occur. And even greater development occurring as we get into the evening hours and probably even into the overnight here. So looking at the mid-levels of the atmosphere, looking at our short waves, these are great points of lift when it comes to severe weather. We can already see evidence for today, especially as we get towards the back half of the afternoon. Like I said, initiation time could be right around sunset or maybe a little bit before. So we could get some nocturnal action as well. And then on the following day, pretty much a similar deal as this trough ejection occurs. Here's those short waves over here towards Oklahoma and Kansas. There's our points of lift and we continue to see those amplify as we get later into the evening. So could be a a long 48 hours of severe weather across the region here so like i said you need to be bracing yourselves if you're over towards oklahoma kansas texas as well and missouri along with iowa here next thing we'll go ahead and take a look at is our 850 jet this is our low level jet and like i said with the things that we always like to talk about here is directional shear speed shear is important here too but i often will prioritize directional shear just a little bit more personally speaking not saying that it's less that it's more or less important but you need both but usually when you have good directional shear usually speed shear coincides pretty well along with it directional shear is basically where like for example we have these winds coming from the south to the north here and then as you saw with the 500 we had winds that were going more so this way you have winds going this way and this way intersecting at some point there's your directional shear so with that in mind we already have the atmosphere wanting to spin here we have vorticity going on here 
So as we go throughout the day, we have that low level jet start to strengthen as we get closer towards sunset and a little bit after. So this is why I'm why well, not just I, but many other people are concerned about the tornado threat here, of course. So we get into the following day here. Pretty much the same thing occurs here, especially as we get later into the afternoon. Directional shear looks better. Speed shear probably is going to be much higher with Saturday. So like I said, very dangerous couple of days are possible here. We even had a few of the National Weather Service stations saying that there could be a good chance for a couple of stronger tornadoes, maybe even violent. Not to scare anyone, but definitely acknowledging the potency that the system could have here. So like I said, the best thing to do is to make sure you're staying weather aware. As far as our thermos are concerned, we have plenty of energy available. We have plenty of moisture available here. You can already see the impressive moisture returns as we get into tonight here. 60 degree plus dew points spreading all throughout the severe weather region, of course. And then we'll continue to see that as we get into Saturday. Look, just look at how once this storm system passes through, we do dry off for a minute over here over towards Oklahoma. But look how quickly we recover as we get into the next morning. Dew points nearing the 70s by the time we're in the afternoon and we just continue to get this hose of Gulf of Mexico moisture just pumping more and more moisture across this region so like I said Saturday setup looks pretty impressive today's setup is looking pretty good as well definitely worthy of the enhanced risk that both days have been given surface temperatures to go along with that we're looking pretty warm here across the board the temp surface temps are a little bit cooler over towards Kansas City and Iowa and also parts of Northeast Missouri, but still sufficient enough for severe weather. If, you, if you're near the 70s, you can get some good action. But as we go into the following day, look at the surface temps over here towards Oklahoma City and areas around where our storms are expected to fire here. We're getting good bit of 60s, good bit of 70s, a few 80s sneaking in even there, here and there. But regardless of that, it definitely has that look that you would be looking for in regards to severe weather and then eventually from the looks of it here you could even see what looks to be almost the main line of storms developing over here towards texas and oklahoma as we get into the overnight hours here this would be a little bit after midnight but go ahead and take a look at our instability here that's available this is our mixed layer cape showing all level the uh, instability in all levels of the atmosphere and coming up with an average number have impressive instability here especially over towards kansas city in particular i think that's going to be a point of interest also over here towards iowa there's pretty good instability further to the south the instability is higher but the kinematics aren't quite as good so i think large hail is going to be a bigger threat here to the south even though the colors are a little bit more of an eye eye draw but if we go into the following day look how much instability is already hanging around by morning here and look at how this builds throughout the day Almost, I would say, even explosive environment for severe storms here. Some areas getting towards 3,000 plus joules, or kilo, joules per kilogram of CAPE here. Put in perspective for you, the threshold number or the minimal that you would really typically need is about 1,000. You can honestly have severe weather at less than that if other parameters are pretty good, but everything just seems to be there. So, like I said, we'll have to see how this trends. We may even see a moderate risk for tomorrow. But... A couple other things we'll look at before we go here. Quick look at the significant tornado parameter. And we are going to see some decent numbers today. Nothing insane, I would say, at the moment. But we do have some higher numbers here just to the south of Kansas City here. We've got a 5.5 and a pretty good and a pretty good looking sounding here. I would say the numbers are... I'd say the metrics are looking pretty good. Our hodograph loop is looking pretty impressive. I would say this checks out for sure. A lot of energy available. If you want, we can uh, do a skew T video on here someday. Uh, just let me know in the comments if that's exactly what you would want from me in the future here. I have a whole list of videos that I would love to do, but I would only, I'll only do it if you guys want me to. But in any case here, 
it's interesting that we're going to be looking at the potential for some low precip supercells here because there's a parameter on here pw precipitable water here can't highlight it because it'll just move the whole chart but we're just under an inch for that and usually that indicates a little bit of a lack of precipitation here so it could be some photogenic storms here for storm chasers as well then as we continue to go forward this is heading into the following day the numbers are going to start to build up as we get later into the afternoon it's a pretty uh diverse spread here it's not just one focused area there's multiple areas where you could see impressive numbers and just looking at the uh, profile here from zero to three looks really impressive nice looping hodiograph once again of course lift index isn't quite as impressive but in any case though looking at the overall numbers here as far as sheer energy helicity whatnot we're looking we're looking impressive we're looking very impressive could, like i said could definitely be a dangerous couple of days ahead here so this is the last thing we're going to look at here is our simulated radar we're going to take a look at what time storms could fire both today and tomorrow here so this is right around afternoon time we don't really see a lot of action it's really going to start to pop off right around it looks like 5 p.m central time and really start to pick up from that point heading later into the evening and then after that point we're going to see new development occur here we see this first little line of storms get going and then from here once we get later into the evening this is when things start to really take off on saturday i think this is going to be more of an evening maybe even an overnight event it could even last into early sunday and there's also a slight risk for sunday as well which we'll talk about in a later video but that being said that's all i got for you guys i appreciate you all watching the video here thank you again and i will hopefully see you guys this evening I'm trying to resolve the issues so we can get back to going live without any issues here but until then it's been tired metalhead weatherman you guys take care and have a safe rest of your day